Hello friends and welcome to Outside. Outside is the world's number one MMORPG with over 7 billion players worldwide and that number is growing every single day. For every one player that cancels their subscription, we have 7 to 10 players joining up. It is just that unstoppable. It has taken the world by storm and now is your chance to jump on in and try it for yourself with the latest in high fidelity graphics well at least depending on the species you've chosen to main peregrine falcons some of the highest fidelity we have available uh dogs not so much but we will mostly be focusing on the humans throughout these series which is an exceedingly popular build to main the ability to customize your character and even your base in any way you see fit, well, at least as long as you have attained the gold that is needed to do so. It's all in-game currency! I swear it's not pay to win, mostly! <laughs> and also one of the deepest social networking systems that the gaming world has ever, ever seen! And that even includes this video. I love playing the YouTube minigame. And it is quite easy to see why Outside has taken the world by storm. The only true goal in Outside is to create a fulfilling experience for yourself. And, well, hopefully for your other players as well. Although that part really is completely up to you. There can be, uh... Heavy consequences for living outside the law, but some players have found it to be quite lucrative and wouldn't have it any other way. Regardless of alignment and whether you're in the endgame retirement phase or still working your way through the tutorial, this channel has been designed from the ground up to assist you in optimizing your gameplay and helping you reach whatever goals you've chosen to pursue. Outside stands on the cutting edge of reality simulation, boasting an almost endless variation of mods, minigames, and content to capture the imagination of all types of players. With a list of topics so extensive, you might find yourself at least slightly overwhelmed. Well, in this episode, we will talk a bit about the basic meters, stats, and attributes that will either help or hinder your journey through this world. We might cover these a bit more in depth at a later date, but for now, this should provide a decent overview. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right into it with creating a character. So how is a character created? Well, uh, your, your mommy and daddy should probably should have had this talk with you, but we can cover it briefly now. When two gamers love each other very much or are drunk without inhibitions, they may undertake the sex side quest. Upon completing the sex side quest, there's a chance for the female character to receive the pregnant status. It is important to note that the pregnant status can only occur when a male and female character complete this side quest at the same time. Or at least the male completing it, I suppose. <laughs> Ideally, both players will complete the quest, but as long as the male character sees the completion message, you will roll for a chance of conception, whether that was intended or not. Pregnant characters have the fetus item added to their inventory and may choose to see the pregnancy to term or discard the fetus from their inventory and terminate the pregnant status. The fetus item might not seem like much of a burden at first, but after a few months, it will be taking up more and more inventory space, adding to your encumbrance. The birthing quest is one of the most difficult side quests in the game. Make no mistake about it. Female characters that choose to complete this one should absolutely be given their due. Some side effects of the fetus item might include undertaking the peeing minigame far more often the headache debuff, mood swing debuff. You might have aversions or cravings for different types of consumables. You gotta eat the lettuce, right? Just straight up eat the lettuce. Undertaking the sleeping activity also gets more difficult 
There's also swollen extremities debuff, hemorrhoids debuff, gas, bloating, heartburn, backache. Oh, it really does not end. We can cover whichever debuffs you like in a future video, but for now, let's just continue to run through this one. So, should this pregnant character carry the fetus in their inventory for approximately 9, maybe closer to 10 months, they will give birth generating a new player avatar. Congratulations. The statistics threshold of this new avatar are determined by an aggregate of the conceiving player's aggregate stats. The new character does not receive the consciousness update until approximately two years of age when a new player will take control of this character and they will actually begin the game. Do note that even before this consciousness update happens, there can be certain events that occur that might lead to trauma or comfort, which provide their own debuffs and buffs respectively. It is exceedingly important to take the best care possible of our young players. Caring for a character separate from yourself, admittedly, can be a huge undertaking, but there are many players that consider this to be the true end game of outside. You need to treat this character as a top priority because letting one of these characters die can lead to legal consequences in game. Prison is one of the worst side quests to undertake. There is not one person on the planet who has come out unscathed except maybe over in Norway. Pretty nice prisons over on their server, honestly. Most player characters will take great strides to avoid ever going through a penitentiary server, even for the shortest periods of time. So with that kid out in the world, not dead, you not in jail, let's talk about rolling stats for a little bit. Upon character creation, stats are randomly assigned to this new player character. Statistic thresholds are determined by averaging the stats of both parents. These averages are used to define the lower and upper thresholds of the stat scores of our new player. Upper limits can be exceeded by rigorous training or buffs, and of course, lower limits can also be exceeded by accumulation of debuffs. Other factors may contribute to variations in your statistic scores or thresholds, such as age or injury debuffs. Speaking of, let's talk a bit about aging and statistics. So it probably goes without saying that where a character is in their life cycle may have a pretty significant impact upon a character's attribute scores. Infant characters are physically and mentally weak and many new player stats only really begin to peak in their teenage years. Come middle or old age, well, many stats begin a slow and steady decline unless rigorous training is utilized to maintain your statistical score. Some stats are not influenced by age, while others are dramatically impacted. Ages listed in the following statistics are a rule of thumb. Really just highly generalized averages for any randomly generated character. Outliers, however, are not unheard of. That's what makes them outliers. Depending on how a character is played, who their parents are, and any number of environmental factors or player actions, peaks and declines might be reached earlier or later in a character's life cycle. Minimums and maximums may be adjusted as a result of actions or environmental influence. And I think that segues us nicely into stats character advancement, and the law of diminishing returns. Attributes and skills are increased by performing in-game actions that utilize the attribute or skill. Barring a few exceptions, almost all statistics can be increased by repeated use. Skills and attributes that are not regularly trained may begin to decrease in value as the skill or attribute begins to atrophy from disuse. If you don't use it, you lose it, is the golden rule around here. Primary statistics. All characters in Outside have seven primary attributes. Strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. Or special, if you will. 
Anyone who has played the Fallout minigame within Outside will probably be familiar with these attributes. So each primary attribute governs a series of secondary attributes and skills that are calculated off of these base scores. So let's explore our first statistic, and that of course is strength. Strength is the measure of a character's physical prowess. Characters with high strength can hurl boulders, deliver devastating blows with strength-based melee weapons, and even open pickle jars with ease. <laughs> Shocking, I know. Strength influences a multitude of physical character skills, most notably melee weapon skills and some secondary stats like hit points, resistances, melee damage modifiers, and of course, carrying capacity. Our next stat up is of course, perception. Perception is a measure of a character's senses. Characters with high perception have acute senses, and they might see, hear, smell, taste, or even feel things that other characters simply can't. Perception influences not only a character's sensory abilities, but it also factors highly into precision-based skills and even a character's accuracy if undertaking combat. Some curious folk might point to blind people and say, wow, they must have a huge debuff to their perception. But actually, their hearing is generally buffed in order to make up for that. While strength has many outward signs, perception, as the name would imply, requires a bit more perception in order to discern. It can be exceedingly hard to even determine your own perception stat if your own perception stat is relatively low. Before I get too lost in the sauce regarding that, let's move on to our next stat, and that is endurance. Well, endurance, of course, is a measure of a character's staying power. Characters with high endurance can move great distances without getting tired, take more damage, have increased stamina, and regularly ignore their bedtime like a boss. <laughs> endurance, like strength, factors heavily into numerous physical skills. Endurance most notably governs secondary statistics, like hit points, stamina, wound chance, and carrying capacity. Even if a character with high endurance is injured, the chances that they'll be able to press on despite the injury is quite high. While endurance isn't as needed as it was back in the Stone Age meta, it still manages to find its uses. Charisma! Possibly one of the most important skills, as far as I can discern. Charisma is a measure of a character's appeal. Characters with high charisma fluidly navigate social situations, make great quips, and are generally more attractive. And I don't even mean physically. A great attitude can take you a very long way. They're also often able to evoke strong feelings from others. Charisma heavily governs skills that pertain to social interaction, and charisma-oriented characters also enjoy boosts to their attractiveness and influence. In the current meta, I would say that Charisma is one of the strongest stats to build. Of course, I might be just a little bit biased on that, considering my job. Next up, we have Intelligence, which is also exceedingly important, right up there with Charisma within the current meta, and Intelligence is a measure of a character's reasoning power. Characters with high intelligence learn quickly, solve problems with relative ease, and even write brilliant dissertations on gamifying life. Intelligence is necessary for technical skills. A high intelligence character learns faster than others, often leveling up skills or receiving experience at a higher rate than lower intelligence characters. Considering how many skills and minigames are available to us in the current modern meta, any points spent in intelligence will quickly prove their worth. The next stat up for those keeping track is, of course, agility. And agility is a measure of a character's reflexes. Characters with high agility can walk on tight ropes, run faster, shoot straighter, and generally perform more actions in a shorter amount of time. Agility plays heavily into physical skills that often require a degree of more tact or finesse than other physical attributes can offer such as playing a guitar, or doing more precise and detail-oriented work. 
Agility used to be a very popular stat to build, however, it has fallen by the wayside along with most physical stats in favor of the uh, more mentally inclined stats. Agility does add bonuses to move speed, poise, and actions per minute. Agility can be important, however, depending on what sort of build you're going for. There are some people who profit off of it greatly. I, however, am not one of those people. Finally, our last stat, possibly the most important, but also the most nebulous, is luck. Luck is really just a measure of a character's favor with RN Jesus. Characters with high luck find that things just happen to be going their way more often than not. A strange thing about this stat is that it doesn't seem to be static throughout one's life. We've had certain players hit the lottery minigame for millions of dollars and then their entire gameplay session falls apart a couple of years later. Did they use up all their luck? Is that how it works? Nobody knows. The game devs have kept the source code for all of Outside a closely guarded secret, so we can only really speculate. As you can tell, we have three physically based stats, strength, endurance, agility. There are also three mentally based stats, being perception, intelligence, and charisma. If you found yourself playing any time before the Industrial Revolution pack, then the physical skills were highly regarded. However, after the Industrial Revolution patch, the mental skills have taken more precedence. How will things go in the future? Maybe the Apocalypse patch will be dropped soon and society will fall apart. Nobody really knows. So I would highly suggest keeping as well-rounded a character as possible so you can be ready for all situations. There is of course much, much, much more to talk about uh, regarding r slash outside life RPG, but I don't want to overstay my welcome. I think next week's episode will be dedicated largely to uh, the substats and things that you need to keep eyes on, such as your health and energy meters. We might also brainstorm some ideas for new episodes. And of course, I want to talk about the late games and goals. There, there really is just endless stuff that we can do with this concept, and um, I hope that you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. Remember to keep your head on a swivel, keep them stats high, and I'll be here to help you along the way. If you did enjoy this video, I hope you'll like, comment, and or subscribe, friends. I appreciate that so very much. Check out some of my other channels and links in the description, and I shall see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.